again. Nice to see you. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned the WAS plan where I helped a lot of Apple people get stock, but they didn't mention that I gave $20 million of my own stock to five early people from the garage days. Really? Because, because, yeah, Steve Jobs and the board of directors wouldn't give them anything, but I wouldn't have done what I, w what I wanted to do if I didn't have some friends around. <laughs> they were the young people right at the very start. And I had come up with some values at Hewlett Packard where I worked that, well, you got stock options based on profits, you got profit sharing, and it was like you'd, that would make you feel like an owner of the company. But these people were, yeah, so important. They didn't put that in the movie. Yeah. It wouldn't have started except for two people, myself and Steve Jobs, that's for sure. And I had incredible skills where I could think of a finished product in my head and I knew how to combine parts and hook them together and build that thing extremely well. I had a job at Hewlett Packard building the hottest product of the times, the iPhone 6 of its day the scientific calculator at Hewlett Packard, and I didn't even have a college degree. And so, so that was one key, and I, and I did create. In a certain year of my life, based on the price of building parts, I was gonna create that computer, the Apple I and the Apple II. They were both significant in their ways. I was gonna create that computer, but who knew that that year it was gonna have huge value to the world? But did now, you know Steve, you were building something that was gonna change the world? Did you already know oh, I it? Totally, I totally knew it, or at least I totally believed it. Maybe you don't know it in advance. There was no big input of money from all the smart investors and financial people and people that understood computer companies. No big money coming in. There was no visibility of big money in what we were doing. They're taking these little tiny chips, building very tiny computers that a person could own but they wouldn't do any of the jobs the big computers did, so that's why the big computer companies did market research of all the people using the big computers, and of course the answers they got back was the small ones won't do what we need, but they weren't doing market research with new people, you know, lawyers mm. and doctors and dentists and teachers and students and everybody in life. I loved the common people. I wanted to build practical products and interactive products that people pushed things and, and results came back. All my life, that's the only thing I wanted to do as an engineer. But Steve Jobs was equally important. I didn't get to mention his role. He always wanted to find ways to be something important in life. When we first met, I was in college, Steve was in high school, and he always kind of spoke about these dreams of how to be that important person that moves the world forward. The problem is he didn't have good academic grades, he didn't really have any big skills. He had learned electronics, and you learn electronics and you can build things from a, somebody else shows you how to build them, but that doesn't mean you can create your own. He didn't have the creative, make new things from an idea. That wasn't his ability, but he wanted to be important in the world. And for five years before Apple, five years, he would come into town about once a year, see something I had created for fun, and he would turn it into money for each of us. <laughs> you know, a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars each time and, um, and one of them, he took a, a board I built to play Pong, and he took it down to Atari because it was so tiny, with so few parts, it cost no money, 28 little $1 chips. He took it to Atari that was building the first arcade games, and they hired him, and I think they thought he designed it. <laughs> but <laughs> but he, he understood electronics to some extent, like a technician, but he didn't really know how to design a computer. He never programmed. If you haven't programmed, you really don't know a computer at all. So that, that was a good blend. Steve Jobs had no job. I had a job as an engineer. So I had just a little money to you know, pay for an apartment and a, and a life. Steve came into town every once in a while and he'd be barefoot and he'd be eating out of packets of seeds. And so his desperation, <laughs> he would look at whatever I had that year and he'd say, we've got to get some money.